Hey Insiders, we're back with another edition of Newsflash, bringing you the best of YouTube's updates just the way you like them, direct and to the point. And I know you like things direct and to the point because I read through all of the comments on last week's video and you provided some excellent feedback. Number one, the audio quality was pretty terrible, which is why we have this bad boy now. The echo was pretty annoying and you all had to turn up your volumes um, so you can't see it now, but there's not a lot of sound insulation around me. So that's going to inform the way Newsflash is going forward. So let's get into it. First update is around the uploads escape hatch. That's something that was removed on June 22nd, and that completes the migration of the uploads flow from Classic to Studio, something Tom would be really proud of. We have the news you've all been waiting for, which is latency improvements when it comes to the watch time from impressions report within the funnel report itself. Hope you got my joke about news you've all been waiting for and latency improvements. Okay, let's get into it. Um, so for creators, what had been happening up until now is that you had to wait up to two days after publication in order to see that updated funnel report. And this is in spite of the fact that you already had some metrics in terms of impressions and click-through rate. But we had always been waiting on the slowest metric, which is watch time from impressions, to actually come in. With this change, we hope creators will see the information up to date after about a day um, rather than the full two. And this should also resolve some inconsistencies that you might see within the reach tab in channel analytics. Next up, we have some alerts for merch purchases in live chat. That's right, this is a new launch. A couple of news flashes ago, we introduced this as a mini sneak peek to the Creator Insider Nation, but now we're going for full launch. So what this means is that for creators who use you know, Teespring and live streaming on YouTube, what you will see, the same as everybody else, is an alert pop up when anybody purchases some of your merch. So what we hope is this will increase some of the buzz around your merch as well as your content all good things for creators and you don't have to do a thing and uh, next up we're bringing back the other connor with two ends uh, to give us some insights from unlisted video review now jenny sat down with tom a couple of weeks ago to go through exactly what unlisted video review is so if you need more context to take a scan back and watch that video again but every couple of weeks connor is going to be coming back and giving us some insights uh, about the learnings that the policy team are taking away. Hey everybody, this week's insight is around the topic of violence and shocking content. So starting at a high level, violent or gory content that is intended to shock or disgust viewers um, and content that encourages others to commit violent acts uh, are not allowed on YouTube. Content including violence that has clear educational, documentary, scientific, or artistic intent and context, such as a news broadcast about a violent event, is generally allowable on YouTube, um, but may not be appropriate for all audiences. We treat dramatized violence, such as a fight scene in an action movie, or the use of weapons in a video game, slightly differently than we would quote-unquote real-world violence. So for example, violence that occurs in standard video game play um, would be suitable for monetization, so long as it does not contain graphic scenes. Um, some examples of that might be people being dismembered uh, or, or decapitated, uh, human corpses with severe injuries, that sort of thing. One concept to keep in mind is intent. So um, an example would be a compilation video of graphic violence, um, whether that's real world, from a video game, from a movie, or otherwise would not be suitable for monetization and may not be allowed on YouTube at all, depending on the context, um, because the intent there is to shock or horrify the audience. Okay, I have one last example for you, um, and this one doesn't uh, squarely fit in what most of us think of, at least right away when it comes to the word violence, um, but let's talk about injuries, um, and specifically um, injuries that might take place in something like a, a sporting event. A video focusing on graphic injuries, say a compilation of many different injury, injuries across a number of events um, likely would be removed from the platform, uh, where on the other hand, a news coverage with clear explanation of, of the situation, uh, maybe a specific 
um, sporting injury, um, uh, if it had the correct context surrounding it, would likely be allowed on the platform. Um, but depending on the level of injury sustained, may be age restricted. So this is a good example of one that uh, may not immediately come to mind when you think of um, our violence policies, but is important to uh, to keep in mind along with all the rest. So yeah, that's our insight for you this week. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks, Connor. Next up, we have some really great news for anyone who's wondered how YouTube works. That's pretty much all of us. But what we've done is on the 25th of June, so just a couple of days ago, we launched a site called How YouTube Works. Now, what this site does is go through a couple of answers around policies and product features that have been really common over the past couple of months. This is gonna be updated on a constant basis. So if you're looking for another area where YouTube is trying to be more transparent with you, this will be it. You can find a link in the description. We have another cameo, this time from Lucas. The famous PM from the audio library is gonna be joining us for yet another cameo. Seems like everybody's trying to steal my show. And um, he's gonna be walking us through some updates with regard to the audio library in studio. Take it away, Lucas. Get your, get your creator insider swag, everyone. Hey, this is Lucas. I'm here to talk about our audio library. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a resource we've had in Classic Studio for quite some time. There's thousands of free copyright safe songs for you to use in your video in there. They're all set up with our content ID system so that if you use them, you can be sure you're not gonna get copyright claims and everything is monetization safe if you're eligible to monetize your videos. We are getting ready to launch the new version of this in the new Creator Studio. Uh, we started with a little experimental release a few weeks ago and we got some great feedback from you guys when we did that. So we made some tweaks and now we're getting ready to start rolling it out fully. So I wanted to give you a little tour of what's in there and what you'll be able to do. Uh, so first off, we made it a lot easier to find. It's right here in the left nav bar of uh, your channel in studio. When you go in there, you'll see that we have this simple table that you can search, you can filter. And there's a few key things in here that I wanna mention. So first of all, uh, we have this new column where it shows you the date that we've added new tracks. We add new tracks every month. And this list is uh, sorted by default to show you the, the tracks that were most recently added. Uh, you can search by uh, keyword, song title, or artist name up here, just like you were able to in the old version of the library. Uh, but we've added a, an updated filter menu that you can use too. And you can choose one filter or several filters and kind of drill down a list of things to look at. Uh, when you preview tracks, the player appears at the bottom here and that lets you keep scrolling through the list as you're listening to stuff. And then you can also use these arrows to skip backward and forward through your tracks. Um, so let's say you find a particular song and there's some dimension of it that you wanna drill in on further. Like you, li you like this particular artist or whatever. Uh, you can click on this inline filter and that will actually filter the list further from, from within the results that are showing to show you just stuff from that artist. Or you can do the same thing by mood. Uh, so that's a really useful inline filter feature that's new. Uh, you can also, as always, download the song and use it in your own editing software um, on your own computer. And very soon you'll be able to access this stuff in the editor in, in studio as well and, and use the full library and add things directly into your your videos. There are a couple of things that we're still in the process of bringing over, which I wanna quickly walk through. Uh, so if, if you're using it and you notice that something is missing, uh, you can really easily get back to the classic version of the library via this link in the upper right-hand corner. So for example, we're still moving over sound effects um, and soon there'll be a, a dedicated tab here where you can uh, browse through and download sound effects. You'll also notice that songs uh, that are under the Creative Commons license are not in here yet. Uh, these include songs from some popular audio library artists like Kevin MacLeod. Uh, they'll be added soon here as well, and we're going to have some improvements that make it easier to use them under the Creative Commons terms. And we'll say more about that when, when that happens. So we really hope you enjoy using the audio library for, you, for your videos. It's a really great safe, free option for finding music. Please do send us your feedback. Uh, there's an in-product tool that you can use to submit uh, 
your comments and questions and ideas to us. We really do look at this stuff to uh, inform our plans. So let us know what you like, what you don't like, any ideas you have about what we should do in the future. All right, that's it for now. Thanks. That's it. We are done with another week of the News Flash. Before we go, I want to announce the winner of last week's trivia question, which was, which famous alcoholic beverage has been described as the wine of Ireland? And of course, that was Guinness. And I want to congratulate Bold Gamer um, and toast him for hopping into those comments as fast as he did. So next week's trivia question is which video on the platform reached 1 million views first? So if you can jump in with a general idea of what the concept was, who the publisher was, or ideally a link uh, to the video itself, we will announce the winner. For my part, thanks so much for all of the really productive feedback um, in the comments from last week. Keep on providing it. Um, and we'll keep on making improvements such as this nifty mic. Thanks so much.